was about three years after I was diagnosed with a BRCA gene mutation that I really understood what BRCA was in the first place. And that's partly because I'd been burying my head in the sand and I felt completely overwhelmed and I didn't want to think about it. And partly because when people talk science to me, I just glaze over a little bit. I've created this video for myself three years ago. It's how I would have liked to have known about it. I don't think I was in a position where I would have potentially gone home and read a book about it or gone on the internet. So this is really accessible and simple way of explaining BRCA. If you need more information, there's links down below. The acronym BRCA, B-R-C-A, stands for breast cancer. We have a BRCA1 gene and a BRCA2 gene. The BRCA1 gene was discovered in 1994 by an absolute ledge called Dr. Mary Claire King, and that led to the discovery of the BRCA2 gene. Everybody has these genes in their body, so I'm gonna explain that in a little bit. 1994 is not really that long ago in terms of scientific discoveries or medical discoveries. There is still loads of research being done on this gene and its mutation. I think that's one of the really difficult things when you're making your decision, because you think maybe in a year's time Time, there's going to be completely new information out there so it can be really really unsettling if you have this gene mutation. Do you know 1994 was when Friends came out on telly? I don't actually remember that it was quite a long time ago. It was also when The Lion King came out of the cinema and I definitely remember seeing that so really not long ago at all. It wasn't even until 2013 that we started testing for the BRCA gene mutation in the UK. I'm gonna get down low and explain this a little bit better not in a dodgy way at all. To explain the BRCA gene, we first of all have to explain cancer. Now this is a real simple definition. So if you're watching this and you're a scientist and you think you can add to this, please, 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 I would love to have you on my channel. Now let's pretend that these are your boobies and these are your cells. Cells multiply all day long. That is a healthy part of being a human. Sometimes a cell can become a little bit damaged. If it gets to the stage where it becomes a real wrong un, we don't really want that cell to be multiplying. If it does, it can develop into a cancerous cell. So cancer is unregulated cell division. Now the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 genes, these are different, but for this explanation, I'm gonna lump them together. As I said earlier, everybody has these genes in their body. They are good guys they produce tumour suppressor proteins. So they kind of work like guardians. Before a cell ever becomes a wrong un, they get involved. They kind of work a little bit like a door supervisor. So they're checking everybody's IDs and they're making sure that everybody in the club is supposed to be there. Now, if you have a mutation of this gene, so this guy, he stops the BRCA1 and the BRCA2 genes from working effectively. If he was a door supervisor, he might not be checking everybody's IDs, so some are slipping through the net. He's a little bit oblivious that there are any changes in the cells in the first place. So by that definition, if you have a BRCA gene mutation, he doesn't come along and give you cancer, he just stops this gene from working properly. This means that you can live your whole life with a BRCA gene mutation and never actually develop cancer but the statistics are pretty high. So shall we have a look at some stats? I feel really mean making Raphael the bad guy here. Before I explain the statistics, I just wanna say that they are, they're not great. They're really not great. And I think for some people, you look at the statistics and you think this is a death sentence, but it isn't. It would be a death sentence if we didn't know or we hadn't discovered this mutation. It actually gives you lots of opportunities for staying alive for longer. So it's a really positive thing. I'm gonna do another vlog about what your options are. So things like chemo prevention, risk reducing surgery, regular screenings. I'm gonna explore that in more detail. Now the stats. The average female has about a 12.5% chance of developing breast cancer, which isn't great. I would prefer 0%, but I would maybe take my chances with that one. Somebody who has a BRCA1 gene mutation has between a 60 and a 90% chance of developing breast cancer. Somebody with a BRCA2 mutation has between 45% and 85% chance of developing breast cancer. Now, I would say even the lowest of that, which is 45%, Somebody told me I had a 45% of, I don't know, getting struck by lightning if I went outside, I probably wouldn't risk it. 
so they are high chances. About one in 400 people in the UK have a BRCA gene mutation. I didn't do the maths because I'm not clever enough for that, <laughs> but my boyfriend did the maths for me. And we figured about 160,000 people in the UK are living with this gene mutation. So high chances of developing breast cancer. And unfortunately, quite a lot of times, these are metastatic cancers. So they spread quite quickly to other organs in the body. Also, the chances of developing a new cancer are high. Let's say, for example, you've had breast cancer in your left boob and you've got a BRCA gene mutation. If you have that boob removed, so a single mastectomy, the chances of developing a new cancer in the other boob is about 50% for both BRCA1 and BRCA2. So we are often offered to have a double mastectomy even if one of them is healthy. Also, it really links to young age. So we see quite a lot of young people being diagnosed with breast cancer. It significantly increases over the age of 30. Although it's called BRCA or BRCA, which as we know stands for breast cancer, there are also much higher chances of developing ovarian cancer. Those are my ovaries up there. They're not my actual ovaries, obviously. General population again is about 2% likelihood of developing ovarian cancer and with BRCA1, that increases to about 40 to 60%. And with BRCA2, it increases to about 10 to 30%. So a huge, huge increase. There are links to other types of cancer which I'm gonna explore in another vlog, but most importantly for now is thinking about breast and ovarian cancer. So where do these gene mutations come from? They're inherited, so you will get it either from your mother or your father. If you have a mum or a dad who has a BRCA gene mutation, then you'll have 50% chance of getting it. If both your parents have a BRCA gene mutation, then you have about a 75% chance of inheriting that gene. And this is the first time, really, we have linked cancer with genetics. It's not environmental. It's not about how much alcohol you drink or how much sugar you eat or whether you smoke or not. I remember saying to my genetic counsellor, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna quit alcohol, I'm not gonna drink anymore, I'm gonna eat all the kale in the world. And she said to me, that's still not gonna change the fact you have a gene mutation. So those statistics aren't gonna go down. And by all means, you should live a healthy lifestyle. This vlog is all about healthy living. So I encourage that completely, but it says, you can still live the healthiest lifestyle in the world and develop cancer if you've got a BRCA gene mutation. Also, because it's in the genes, often people who have a BRCA gene mutation have had lots of death in their family. It's something that's inherited. Grandmas, sisters, cousins, aunties, mothers often are dying within the family. It kind of feels a little bit like your family is plagued with cancer, right? It is much, much more prevalent in the Ashkenazi Jewish community. And in, I think it was September 2019 in the UK, scientists released a study basically saying they recommend everybody within the Jewish community to be tested. I'm gonna be talking about testing in a completely different vlog and the pros and cons of being tested and why you should get tested and what the criteria is around that. I hear you screaming at me, what about men? Really, really important. I live now in a family of men. Since I lost my mum, I've been left with one dad and four brothers. One of my brothers has a BRCA gene mutation, the others haven't been tested. My two uncles have BRCA gene mutations and between them they have nine sons. Really, really important issue and because it's so important, I have done a whole separate vlog on it. So have a look at the vlog on BRCA and men. That is the very, very basics around BRCA. I know it's more complicated than that, especially the emotional toll that it has on somebody. So please, if you have any questions, if you wanna get in contact, drop me a link follow me on Instagram, send me a private message. I'm so happy to talk to anybody who needs help. If there's topics you wanna to know more about, so let's think about what cancer is and how it spreads or DNA, please let me know. I'll go away, I'll do my little research and I will try and make it as accessible as possible to anybody who wants to watch it. Have a nice day.